Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that we linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. Great day yesterday. We had the Claude Cup, uh, which was won by AFTV. Great final, by the way, between them and the Wall FC, SC Dons, Hackney Wick. It was a fantastic day. Great turnout. It was uh, two guys, and I'm going to big them up, Thanos and Alex, who came all the way from Cyprus for the game. Big up to them and to everybody else who came down on the day. And to everybody who's donated so far, you can keep donating. The link is still in the description. There's going to be videos of the games coming out this week as well. We get a chance to continue to donate as much money as we can raise for that great cause, um, the better, the Guna Claude Trust. Um, also, great day for the Cronkies. Um, his team, the, the Colorado Avalanche, winning the Stanley Cup. That's two major trophies in American sport for the Cronkies this year. Of course, they won the Super Bowl with the LA Rams, and now they've won the prestigious Stanley Cup. Big cup, that is. I'll tell you, you think the Champions League trophy is big. You want to see the size of that thing. Um, they've won that. And uh, is this a turnaround now for the Cronkies? One of the things that they've always been criticised for is the fact that they own all these different teams and they never really ever win anything. It used to be said that their most successful team was Arsenal. And we know that we ain't had enough success. Um, but now two major wins for them in one year. Are they now looking and saying, right, now it's time for our soccer team to do the same thing? I hope so. I certainly hope so. And listen, they're showing ambition with the signings. Uh, Gabriel Jesus all but confirmed. Um, we saw Fabrizio Romano yesterday putting out one of his famous, uh, here we goes, which normally certifies that a transfer is going to get done. Uh, said to be a five-year contract, £45 million going to Manchester City. And uh, Jesus is going to earn around £192,000 a week. Not bad. Um, 236 appearances, 95 goals and 46 assists in his time at Manchester City. <clears throat> That's a good record. When you consider that he's never really been a real starter there, I think that this guy can really flourish at Arsenal. And speaking to people yesterday who were at the event, I've got to say, I didn't find anybody that wasn't really, really infused about um, this signing. So really, really good news for Arsenal and great to get him in there early before pre-season. Not like last year when we go into um, the first game unprepared, hopefully. Um, what about Rafinha? Um, this is another one we would love to see happen. There was a lots of rumours flying around yesterday that the deal was off. Uh, I think the report came out of Spain where they were saying that, you know, he's only interested in Barcelona he doesn't want to hear anything from any clubs in England. It's Barcelona or nothing. However, um, later on, those stories were sort of poo-pooed by a lot of um, journalists over here in the UK who were saying, no, 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 no. The deal is definitely still on. Arsenal have uh, made arrangements to speak to Leeds United um, this week to try and thrash out a fee for him. We know that Leeds United wants £65 million. Arsenal so far been willing to offer around £50 million. Hopefully some sort of compromise will be done somewhere around the middle. We know that Leeds are looking at other targets at the moment to replace Rafinha. And we also know that, you know, Barcelona are not in a position right now to pay for Rafinha or to buy Rafinha. And surely he's not stupid. He's going to know that as well. So the deal to sign Rafinha is still definitely on. It's not done. There's many things that can still happen that can affect it, that, you know, Barcelona could suddenly get all their books in order and maybe be able to eke out some money to sign him. But really, it depends on so many factors. Usman Dembele, if he stays at Barcelona, I don't think they will even bother to pursue um, Rafinha. And then, of course, their, their number one target, of course, is Lewandowski. And they haven't even signed uh, Kessie and Christensen yet who are waiting to just, you know, join on, on free contracts. So definitely not off that deal. Definitely the deal is still on. This could be a critical week because Arsenal looking like they want to get both Jesus and Rafinha in in time for pre-season and um, they're going to have to get a move on. So talks to happen between the two clubs. Let's see how that develops. What's that with Yuri Tielemans? Well, that's just gone cold, isn't it? I mean... At one time, that was the deal that 
personally, I thought that would be the deal that might even get done first. It seemed to be the easiest deal. 12 months left on his contract. Um, looked to be around about £25 million pound that could get it done, although Leicester do want a bit more than that. And it's just gone completely cold. Um, still think he'd be perfect for Arsenal. Still wondering if Arsenal are going to go back in for him or, you know, there's been suggestions that Leicester might extend his uh, contract by a year. It's a bit of a strange one. A bit of a strange one how he's gone from, like, really, really hot to, to a bit cold. Still suggestions out there that Arsenal still will come back in for Yuri Tielemans, and I, I think it would be a great signing. But I think we have to wait and see on this one because, it, as I said, it's gone a bit cold, and I, I would have thought that they'd be trying to get him in um, before the transfer, you know, before the uh, preseason starts, or maybe they're looking at it and thinking Rafinha, that's our priority. Maybe they've got some sort of verbal agreement with Yuri Tielemans, where it's like, listen, you just chill for a while. We need to get these big ones done first. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. Let's see how that works out. We'll also move in for the Aston Villa wonder kid, Carney Chukwameka. Now, this kid has been tearing it up. In the recent uh, under-19s that England have been playing in. And he's been brilliant. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of comparisons comparing him to um, a player who's played down the road from where he plays. Um, Jude Bellingham, who of course now applies his trade at Borussia Dortmund. And I can see how these comparisons come in. As an 18-year-old, he's a really big kid. Uh, really tall, but a very skillful player. Very commanding in midfield. And... He's only 18, as I said. Only 12 months left on his contract. Now, Aston Villa are desperate for him to sign a new deal. They know that they've got an absolute gem here um, in this kid. And they're desperate for him to sign a new contract. But as of yet, he hasn't signed yet. Which, of course, is worrying Aston Villa. And has got lots of other clubs, including Arsenal, hovering. Right? Right? He's firmly on their radar and they would like to sign him. I mean, I've seen Borussia Dortmund even linked with signing him as well. As I said, I've seen him play in the Premier League when he's come on for Villa a few times. It looks really good. I've been watching him in these under-19s. He's been even better. Um, so, going to be interesting to see what happens with him. As I said, only one year left. Villa are not going to, you know, if they can't get a deal out of him, they're not going to let him, like, go into the last year of his contract and a player like him walk away for absolutely nothing. If it looks like that, they probably will have to sell him. And also one of those teams said to be really interested in him. And he might be looking at it and thinking to himself, as a lot of other young players might be, that, you know what, when I look over at Arsenal, they'll give you a chance to play. And there's a lot of other young success stories there, you know what I mean, in Saka and Smith Rowe. You know, so... Let's, let's wait and see how this one develops. But Arsenal, definitely interested in the Aston Villa wonder kid. Let's see how that one develops. Um, what's happening with Ainsley Maitland-Niles? Now, he's been heavily linked today with a move away from Arsenal to Nottingham Forest. Uh, Forest, of course, who are losing, or should I say, have already lost Jed Spence, who was a real big player for them. He was on loan from Middlesbrough. The loan deal has finished. Um, Forrest wanted to buy him from Middlesbrough, but they didn't get it done. Um, Jed Spence looks like he's on his way to Tottenham. And now, Nottingham Forest, very interested in Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Would be a good move for Maitland-Niles. Good move for Forrest as well. Maitland-Niles, of course, even still young, but an, an experienced player. Um, having played here um, for Arsenal, won the FA Cup with him, having, to play, having also played over in um, Italy last season. He can play in various different positions, including that right-back position. So Ainsley looks like he could be on the move. Um, definitely, there's going to be lots of Arsenal players going out this summer. We already know that. Um, it's just that I'm glad that Arsenal are doing it this way this year, where it's get your key targets first, then we can move on certain players later on. Um, but it looks like Ainsley will be one of those players departing. And we had thought that Dan Ballard had departed from Arsenal. Uh, in his move to Burnley to uh, join up with Vincent Company, However, that deal has broken down. Um, terms could not be agreed, and Dan Ballard is still an Arsenal player. Now, we know that Arsenal had inserted uh, this uh, clause into the deal that said that they'd be able to match any future bids first before he was sold on, and also that they get a share of um, any sort of sell-on money 
um, from the deal. However, I don't know if exactly, but this looks like it could have been a sticking point and the whole thing has broken down and the move, um, Dan Bellow's move to Burnley um, has collapsed. So um, he will still be an Arsenal player for now, unless they can get a deal back on or he moves elsewhere. Um, but the centre-back um, will be returning back to Arsenal. So those are the uh, transfers today. Uh, real exciting week ahead, of course. Uh, Jesus to be announced. And could we be seeing Rafinha after him, the Brazilian connection? It's going to be really, really interesting. Listen, don't forget to subscribe here to AFTV. Want to find out more about Jesus? Go and check out the, vi um, the video that me and James did where James broke it down and spoke about how Jesus will fit into Arsenal's system. Really, really interesting. Um, so make sure you check that out. But thanks for watching the show, and I'll see you tomorrow.